What is up down and sideways, all you love individuals? Welcome back. It's another Repi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties for a little special one because anytime we do these all-time countdowns, it kind of ends up being a little anticlimactic climactic at the end because we go, and it's Faker. Leaps and bounds ahead of everyone, it's Faker. So today, we are giving the Demon King a little bit of a break, and we're saying... Who is the second best League of Legends player of all time? Because first is locked up, sealed in a vault, and will never be touched. Everybody wants to be first, and there are people that are going to tell you it doesn't matter if you're not first. Your last is the way that it goes. That ain't the philosophy for but today. Ricky you Bobby, gotta, he knows, you, man. He knows a lot of things. How to drive a car fast, but he ain't no one about the top tier list for League of Legends. These players, it is important, and especially when you have an anomaly like Faker and what he has done throughout the entirety of his career, you do have to take that moment to step back and evaluate everybody else. Remove him from that pool and acknowledge the greatness that is still there, the reasons why we're fans and are cheering for these players, these type of things. You're absolutely dead wrong if you're telling me that number two player of all time doesn't matter. And it's six players. We've got it narrowed down to. We'll go in order for who probably deserves that number two spot the most. And we start with one of the old pioneers, innovators of the support role. We're talking about Mata, who brought in this vision control meta that's now been going on for a decade plus. And he showed the impact that supports can have outside a laning phase. Don't let anybody tell you supports don't matter if we're talking about one of the best, arguably the best support of all time up here for number two player. This is really, when you're looking at Mata, the evolution, I think, or the starting, the spark of where support became that impactful role. The one that could really change that thing and became this thing where everyone said, I don't want to play support. That's boring to being, well... I want to make the big play. I want to set up the whole team and make it down. Maybe I'm not getting all the credit to everybody else's. That doesn't matter. I know I'm making that big play. And there were no bigger plays back then in the day than Mata on the Thresh making those big hook plays. Yeah, one of the original Thresh princes. He got it done in the LPL and the LCK, capturing titles in the two premier regions. Obviously got the World Finals MVP in 2014. Had some decent... MSI showings and of course so many different teams the dominant Samsung white we saw him on RNG at a high level the KT Rolster era and the SKT era when he was playing alongside Baker four different teams he was representing with at the world championship and you know I'm I'm a bit of a boomer of course and my favorite is going all the way back not all the way all the way back but dialing it back to the RNG days and watching you know, this bot lane destroy what was going to be going through any other squad. That was really when I think my favorite times of Mata on the peaks of everything else. You look at that important Thresh pick. My man played it over 80 times throughout his career in these games. Over 70% win rate on that iconic champion. Very much the icon of the support role. One that changed the way that the position has been played and set up the evolution that we have now seen and are going through the development of with some of these amazing supports and creative supports we have today. Madlife walked so that Mata could run, so that the rest of supports worldwide could, I don't know, skip or triple jump, but a pioneer innovator to the same level, if not more than Madlife. The other guy, number two on this list to talk about, is the guy who's the youngest, who hasn't had, he's had the shortest career. He's always in tandem with his old buddy. We're talking about Canyon and Showmaker go hand in hand. They're separated after their D plus run. But if you had to pick one of these guys to be in that conversation, maybe him and Showmaker reached equal peaks, but the peak was much longer for Canyon. We were two, three years that we were always talking about him either as definitively the best jungler in the world or in that conversation. And I think if you do go back and you look at those damn one series and you see the way that they played out, especially the most important series that they have played, the all crucial ones, you're looking at Canyon being that difference maker, being a disruptor, having a, an effect on the pick and ban. And then what goes on in the game 
much more so i think than showmaker even if they have both reached equal heights for that organization we're looking at canyon and he has an incredible opportunity in front of him this near year ahead of him with gen g and how he could separate from that type of combined legacy that these two share this is a player that we've talked about a lot over the last couple of years. He certainly was one that skyrocketed onto the scene and almost immediately was finding himself on our greatest player list, but he would be at near, you know, near the bottom or an honorable mention. And it would just be with the caveat that said, this guy just needs to add more games. We just need more of a sample size to throw up against everybody else to say that, yes, this guy is it. This is the proof. We're starting to get to that point, And I think we're going to hit a tipping point where this guy is going to reach an ultimate peak four junglers already talking about him as possibly the second greatest player of all time. When you're talking about individual ranking lists like this, Canyon is maybe at the forefront of these 1v9 performances. How many times were D plus and Dom Juan slumping as a team? And their main win condition was, well, hopefully Canyon absolutely pops off on a carry jungler. And that's why so many splits, you were talking about him as the LCK MVP or player of the split, because he was always picking up more than half of the player of game awards for his squad. And, and I think one of the interesting things when you do look at Canyon is, you know, you can talk about players with different types of play styles or champions pool. I think this guy has one of arguably the largest champion pools that we have seen in the jungle, what he can dial down in a list and find success on. Or on the other side, when you're looking at when it's the meta, what the options are, what you can roll through, this guy seems to have something prepared. As long as the team plays aggressive, things are going well for the rest of the squad, the pick won't matter for Canyon. He can get it done. You've seen the boring Udyr meta where he's still rocking an over 80% win rate. You can roll through to the high pace Hecram metas that we have seen and he's rocking over a 91 percent win rate on a champion that you wouldn't be thinking of and of course he's rocking a nice one on the lee sin just like any other good korean jungle well you know he's got one of the greatest lee sin professional plays of all time and uh, then... he's got it he's got it i'm saying it flat out maybe he didn't invent the insect kick but he's absolutely got the best one he definitely innovated it to new heights and something like kane Something that's never even going to be in the meta or is always off meta. He always has a pick that he can fall back on and always seems to step up his play to an even higher level in those game five do or die moments. He absolutely has that clutch factor. So yeah, in another year or two, we might be definitively talking about this guy in at least top three status when you're talking about goats of the game. If this was solely by position, I think it's easy, maybe not easy, but convincing to lock in the second best mid laner of all time. I'd be confident putting Rookie on that list. Obviously, there's other positions we got to talk about today, but maybe the only mid laner that has the longevity matched of Faker, because most people don't even know that Rookie was playing in the LCK and beating Faker way back in 2014 longevity and arguably the consistency maybe not the consistency at the ultra high peaks that we have with faker of course again removed from this type of equation so far in front and even more so after this year but what we have seen from rookie an incredibly long career and a long career played at the high level of whatever region that he's going to be in. I think if you dial this list back to 2018, 2019, I think you'd have a much better case for throwing Rookie right unequivocally into that number two player spot, not just the number two mid laner. But I think since then, you're looking at the LPL splits, you're looking at the squads that he's been on and what he has accomplished. Pretty good individual statistics, but not enough as a team. And you look at what his impact, what his role is on the team, you can find a little bit of that uh, fault, that result there with him. So I think that kind of holds you back a little bit, but you do need to remember the highs of the highs that you saw with this player, that 2018 run to the finals, where you're looking through in his career stats. I think a lot of people are thinking about that Oriana, the control mage is where he really sets himself apart, takes off. The one thing for me is people don't think about the Kiana. They don't think about the Akali. These are also champions with high percentage win rates for him. Got to be looking at those ones that maybe are a little different than that control mage style that you know and think of when you're first thinking of some player like Rook. And I know the knock is maybe the trophy case isn't as full as some of these other guys on this list, but all these other five guys, 
he's had the weakest teams over the years if you're cumulatively looking at it and there's a reason even on some of these weak IG teams he was the only reason to be watching them my guy has four LPL MVPs one of the most competitive regions on the planet and he picked up MVP four times a couple of these were on IG teams that without him weren't even playoff squads and we're talking about someone that is quickly quickly approaching that 1000 game mark so this is one of those other things that needs to be taken into account there's a lot of players that have played many games over their careers getting towards that 1000 mark is certainly a major achievement and keeping about almost a 60 58.5 type of win percentage at that point for rookie and then as you mentioned considering the strength of some of the squads that he has been on where he really is that one big power point absolutely plays into rookie's hand here now Rookie was also one of these. I know there's. it's commonplace to have a Korean import in the LPL now, but he was one of the first guys to get that domestic status in the LPL. We know he's picked up Chinese and is translating for the shy. He used to be translating from Chinese to Korean. Korean to, like The intangibles that this guy has are not showing up on the stat sheet, but truly one of the greatest teammates and players of all time. Number three, or... The fourth guy on this list. A couple years ago, he was right up there with Faker locked in that number two spot. And it still feels like in terms of fame and recognition, Uzi is the only one who's even gotten close to the level level of Faker. When you think of the two greatest players of all time, it has to be that type of conversation. I think we're going to talk about some other players that I think in the last year or two, while Uzi has slowed down and stepped away from the game before he came back this year with EDG, have found the way to catch up and bring themselves into this conversation and rise up. But Uzi was the guy. He was the one that you'd always talk about being comparable to Faker just lacking the world championships and i say just and i understand that well that's kind of a very serious mismatch and lack when you do compare towards someone like faker and his trophy cabinet but the way that he has played the iconic role that he has within his own region this is a player that does need to be talked about in this conversation of the greatest of all time and one of the biggest things with him uh he garnered so much respect from his peers. And that's the most important thing to look at for lists like this. It doesn't matter what you and I are saying, what other media people are saying, when you have other professional players saying, I mean, obvious with Faker, nobody has anything negative to say about him, but Uzi at his peak, all the other bot laners in the world would say that is the most terrifying matchup to have. You have that famous quote of Ruler saying, we didn't do anything wrong in the laning phase, and I was down 20 CS. I don't understand. That's the Uzi difference, my man. And when a player like Ruler is saying that, you got to take note and mention that on the other side. Uh, when you look at Uzi and what he has done, the legacy that he has carved out for himself in the LPL, the iconic status that he does have is something to keep track of. What a player Uzi has been, the legacy that he leaves behind. And when you're seeing him throughout all these games, I always think back to the 2018, the golden road that was supposed to be for this team and how dominant he was mechanically all the way through that year is something I really look back on and I, I think of very well when I'm thinking of Uzi. 2018 MSI is still maybe the greatest individual performance that any player has had at a single tournament. I'm including some incredible ones from Faker and other star players, but Uzi was just completely unmatched at that MSI event and Obviously, you know, he retired heading into 2020 and a few years when the competitive scene is only 10 years old. Players having three extra years, like a couple of these other guys we're going to get to to wrap things up, they can catch up quickly if the accolades start stacking up. And especially with where then not only that, but the way the game has changed and evolved, new champions coming in that certain power picks in the bottom lane, you better believe that it is a different story when you're talking about the landscape that Uzi dominated and had to he fight He missed through. the Aphelios 200 years meta. He could have had 10 more pentakills in his career. Uh, at least we didn't have to see the quadrillion Zeri pentakills he might have picked up on a champion like that as well. Uzi, uh, an icon of a past era of League of Legends is the way that I look at his career and, and sum it up, but certainly one that cannot be forgotten about in a conversation for the second greatest of all time. Now we are deeply entrenched in the 80 carries when we're talking about the second best player of all time. It's got to be 
We've kind of broken it up into tiers, but current day, heading into this new era, it's got to be one of these last two school guys for me that you're talking about as that second best of all time. I would accept either one of these guys. There's arguments to be made for both. It's more, do you prefer the individual level or do you prefer the trophy case type of success? If you're going individual level, there's nowhere else to look. But Mr. Ruler, who we just alluded to, because you go back to the world championship run in 2017. Since then, how many bad years or splits from Ruler did you have? I can think of 2018 Worlds when Gen G went one and five, and that's it. That's the end of the list. He's been a top 380 carry in the world at worst for all those six plus years. He's been a fireworks, disco ball, light show extravaganza. And the only time that light has been turned off, Mr. Faker, the number one himself coming through in this world's run. That is the only time I've seen that nail hit down on Mr. Ruler because he has been phenomenal, as you said, since 2017, making that big play for Samsung to capture their world championship. Since then, the runs with Gen G, the form that he has had the last two years, I don't think there has been an individually as dominant player as we have seen from him throughout the course of starting it up, booting up that PC for the very first game of the split, all the way through to that end of the year. I think right now you're looking at Ruler as the top dog. And you have eras of Gen G because let's not forget, he was loyal to this organization for seven plus years before he ended up going to JDG. But 2018 to 2020 were some not great Gen G squads. And you still could highlight and pinpoint some moments from Blue Ruler that looked absolutely world-class. And you were still talking about him as one of the best AD carries in the LCK. Being able to do that even on subpar teams and then when he did get these star-studded rosters, well, then you were saying, okay, this dude's the best AD carry in the world. And I think one of the things to be talking about, and especially good to mention after coming off of talking about Uzi and the difference in what era of League of Legends we're talking about, is the evolution of Ruler into this new era of League of Legends where the game has changed. And we have these new 200 years of Riot game design champions in the bottom lane. The Aphelios over 70% win rate. You're looking, of course, as well, the Zeri this year, racking up all those pentakills in the LPL. This has certainly been a player that has been boosted and highlighted by the changes to the game, and he has taken full advantage of them. And he's one of two guys, the other guy also on this list in Mata, that actually has a not- losing record in best of fives against faker even though he hasn't captured that elusive um lck title against well i guess he did actually last year so never mind that but he's after worlds 2023 i think he might be even in best of fives against faker but listen most guys are not even close to that so that's a check mark on the resume just doing that standing up to the titan the unkillable demon king like that yes this is someone that can challenge for that type of position that's got to count for something when you're talking about the second best player of all time knowing that of course it is that unkillable demon king sitting on the top of the throne but if you want to go the other route and say i want a jam-packed trophy case the only one that's sniffing a beat towards fakers is mr deft with that elusive 2022 world championship now he's got a world's title msi title lck titles lpl titles i mean this guy's won everything that you can imagine and is has the highest longevity even more than uzi because deft is still playing years after and started at a similar time six different teams he has represented at the world championship the alpaca he makes it onto this list rightfully so this is some guy that was riding the highs of last year's drx run all the way to being in that conversation and arguably taken over for someone like faker a down year for himself individually as well with d plus kia combined with the incredible run for t1 and faker separates things a little bit here where we are talking about depth in this type of position but make no mistake about his accomplishments and skill throughout his career very deserving to be at the very least 
in this type of conversation for second greatest player of all time. What a legacy he has built throughout his career. You can look at it either domestically in the LCK, you can flip it all the way over to the LPL and look what he did there, what he's done since he's come back to the LCK. And then you can turn it that extra dial and go through the whole story, the whole journey that he went through on the international stage, triumphing finally in 2022 with that world championship. And you can talk about the ebbs and flows that he's gone through throughout his career. I feel like we've had multiple stages on post KT, first run with DRX, a bit with Hanwha Life that we were saying, is, is it time? Is Deft washed up? And then second half with Hanwha Life, you say, oh, never mind. This guy's one of the best 80 carries in the LCK, and that's carried over, even if he's not consistently maybe a top three level in a stacked position that is in Korea. He has never whatsoever been a liability and is still absolutely at a world-class level. And every split, you have a few glimpses where you say, yeah, this dude's still got it. Oh he's, oh, he's absolutely still got it more times than not. And one of the biggest things that I still look at with this player is the clutch factor. As you said, he's maybe not been, you know, all the way at his peak of performance all the time. But I think when he has had the resources, when it has come down to him needing to make a play, be there for the team, he's someone that you can rely on to be that guy, to make that difference, to stand up against the tide Deft has done that so many times throughout his career. One of the best players, one that I am so incredibly lucky that we've had the chance to talk about and share the journey with. And that sounds a bit like Mr. Demon King Faker. Showing up when it matters most. Maybe you're not playing at the highest level, but when game five rolls around, you're finding that Azir ulti to kill Ruler and take him out. And <laughs> Deft has done the same thing, not maybe not on Azir, but on other champions throughout his career. So clutch factor. And listen, he's played what, one year less than Faker? So the longevity is absolutely there for him as well. And yeah, you better believe it. And he's had to be there at the high school, listening to everybody he's talk about had to go against Faker for 10 years. Come on. Insane. The alpaca god has been there, and he has been fantastic. Deft, one of the best players of all time, and one that we got to be talking about when you're having the conversation of second greatest all time, for sure. Lots of guys to choose from, but for us, it's got to be Ruler or it's got to be Deft. You can make your argument for either one and try and convince us either way. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with us, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.